So when we announced that Dream at Health was opening, we got literally hundreds of applications to join this, uh, this class. And you can imagine how much work is involved in reviewing those applications. And some you know, leap off the page, others fade into the background. This next company, as I reviewed their application, was definitely one that leaped off the page. It took me back to when I was a medical student, to that eureka moment when you know that that safe, comfortable path all your colleagues are following into medicine is just not the one for you. So please help me welcome Osmosis. Thank you, Elliot. Hi, everyone. My name's Shiv. And I'm Ryan. And we're co-founders of Osmosis. In the next few minutes, we'd like to tell you why 5% of the entire US medical student market signed up for Osmosis even before our app was released. Up until March, Ryan and I were medical students at Johns Hopkins. And we left because we realized that not only is our healthcare delivery system broken, but our healthcare education system is as well. In, in most fields, forgetting means frustration, but in medicine, Forgetting could mean the difference between life and death. The results show that medical students forget a third of what they learn after one year and half of what they learn after two. And this is a huge pain point for medical students who literally spend hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars each trying to learn and retain information better. And this is the problem that Ryan and I tried to solve when we met at Hopkins Med. We became friends on the first day, and I soon realized that Ryan wasn't just another medical student. In high school, he programmed a 3D educational software uh, that won him a national science competition. And in, after college, he earned a PhD in neuroscience at Cambridge on a Marshall Scholarship. And at Hopkins, he coded osmosis in the back of a lecture hall, which is why my classmates and I called him Dr. Zuckerberg. <laughs> Likewise, when I met Shiv, I was impressed with his ability to form relationships with thought leaders in medicine. First, through writing a book on science education whose foreword was written by a Nobel laureate. And most recently, by being invited by TEDMED to curate a cornerstone of this year's conference, the smartphone-based physical. You see, when Shiv and I encountered problems in medical education in terms of learning and retention, we realized we had the right backgrounds to solve them. So, in keeping with our scientific roots, we did a literature review, found proven cognitive techniques and integrated them, using modern web technologies to create a user experience that is intuitive, enjoyable, and even addictive. Our solution consists of two parts. First, we help students learn the material, and then we help them retain that information over time. The web platform solves the learning part of this problem. On the left side of the screen, you have official course documents, such as lecture slides and lecture notes, as well as lecture videos. And these can be pulled from a traditional learning management system. The secret behind osmosis is that we do machine learning on these documents and make learning more relevant for students by recommending publishers' content. And this is what appears on the right. Think of it like Amazon recommendations for education. Students can also contribute and share content, which adds a social and gamified feature to osmosis. Now, you may be wondering, what med student actually has time for any of this. Well, we started Osmosis at Hopkins in January of 2012 as a side project. And pretty soon, med school became the side project. Because we realized we were passing all our exams just by learning through Osmosis. <laughs> and this is what got us excited. Our users contributed over 1,500 videos and images, wrote 5,000 practice questions, and answered those questions over half a million times. The reason Shiv and I left med school was that these stats were generated by an alpha group of only 240 invited users. This demonstrates a tremendous level of engagement among busy med students. So that was the learning part of the problem. To solve retention, we created a mobile app that pushes out review questions and clinical cases to students. Imagine you're a med student waiting for the bus. A push notification appears and presents a clinical case. You click on it, it takes you to the Osmosis mobile app. You can answer the question and rate your confidence. Either I'm sure, I'm feeling lucky, or no clue. <laughs> you then get feedback and move on to the next question. Over the next several months, we're going to be pushing millions of questions to your future doctors, keeping them up to date on their medical knowledge. And we're excited to announce that our app has just been approved by Apple and is now live on the iTunes store. Thank you.
And as we mentioned, more than 5% of our nation's medical students have signed up for osmosis, and these students come from more than 250 institutions. A key point is that we're dealing with a motivated and targeted enough market that our cost of acquisition for these signups were zero. So to recap, we have over 5% of the market signed up for more than 250 institutions and a cost of acquisition of zero. And over the next few weeks, we'll be generating revenue by selling questions on our mobile app, which is free for download. That brings us to our business model. We have three mutually reinforcing revenue streams. First, like Dropbox, we're beginning directly with the consumer. We're getting them hooked on our Osmosis mobile app so that they can, in a few weeks, we can invite them to upload their course documents onto our web platform where they'll get intelligent recommendations. Then institutions can pay for insightful analytics about their students' learning behavior. And because we do machine learning on all of the course documents on Osmosis, publishers can target their content right at the point of learning, when a student is most likely to need it and pay for it. And we're excited to announce that one of our publishing partners is here today, the American College of Physicians, is the publisher of the, the most popular clinical review material, and they comprise over 150,000 members. And we're happy that their CEO, Dr. Steven Weinberger, as well as their VP, uh, Phil, Dr. Philip Masters, are both in the audience. So we'd like to thank them for their vision in supporting innovation in medical education. Thank you. Thank you. In terms of market size, we're beginning with medical students because that's our, our area of domain expertise. But we've already heard from practicing clinicians as well as pre-medical pre college students who are excited to learn through osmosis. Not to mention related professions such as nursing and even pharmaceutical reps. And this is how we go from thousands of users to millions. And we're excited uh, that we can do this because we have a great team of designers, data scientists, and developers, as well as a great cast of advisors. Both Lori and Dave are actually in the audience today, too. The press also likes this, which always is a, is a good thing. As Fast Company recently published, uh, if osmosis can solve the learning and retention problem for medical students, it can solve it for anyone. So now, in terms of next steps, we have two asks for you. First, think about who you personally know at a med school, education publisher, or pharmaceutical company. We'd like to hire them to be osmosis evangelists. So if you know anybody personally, please come find us after the presentations. And second, we'll be raising in early 2014, after we've validated our model, established product market fit among medical students, because at that point we intend to scale to related professions. So if you're interested in education technology and what we're doing, definitely come talk to us and we'll have those conversations today. So with that, we'd like to thank you for your kind attention and thank Dreambit for its tremendous support over the last few months, and I wish you all a happy demo day.